I'm divorcing you. Take the baby and leave. After returning home from giving birth, I saw an incredible scene unfolding before my eyes. David was lying in bed with his mistress, and when I confronted him about it, he said something I could hardly believe. Divorce and get out? How dare he say that? As my frustration grew at how clueless David was about his situation, my dad, who had come with me, dropped a bombshell on him. What? Divorce isn't an option, you know? Because... In the next moment, both David and his mistress went pale as they realized a shocking truth. My name is Rachel Brown, and I'm about to celebrate my third wedding anniversary with my husband, David. We first met as colleagues at work. I was an office assistant at a construction company, and David worked on site, so we saw each other pretty often. But back then... Our interactions were limited to casual greetings, and we didn't really know each other well. We just knew each other's names. It wasn't until a certain incident happened that we started getting involved with each other. I got a job at one of the companies my dad runs. At first, people around me thought it was just because of connections. Because of that, I became a target of bullying from Jennifer the office queen bee. Every day she made my life miserable. Unpaid overtime became the norm and all the unpleasant and tedious tasks were dumped on me while she left on time. I thought about reporting it to my dad, but Jennifer threatened me, saying I wouldn't get away with it if I did, leaving me trapped. You're just a rookie, so of course you should do this much. Back in our day, when we were young, we took care of whatever our seniors told us without a single complaint. Feeling overwhelmed by the excessive workload, I gathered the courage to tell Jennifer that I was over capacity. However, Jennifer snapped at me, brought up stories from the past, and ended with a long lecture. Whenever I got scolded, it always turned into an attack on my character. It's pathetic that you're complaining about this. You're so sloppy and completely lack any backbone. I was getting yelled at so often that I could pretty much predict what she was going to say. I gradually began to suffer mentally and started feeling physically ill. Jennifer even appeared in my dreams, shouting at me. It became normal to have those nightmares. As I was being tormented by her both at work and in my personal life, I started to feel emotionally drained, and that's when the incident happened. One day, I went to work as usual, but I suddenly experienced a rapid heartbeat and shortness of breath. It felt like I was on the verge of a panic attack, and I could barely breathe. I couldn't calm myself down or control it, and I crouched down, clutching my chest. But when Jennifer saw me, she sighed in exasperation. Stop pretending and get back to work. Crouching down like that is just in the way for everyone. Her words brought tears to my eyes as I felt like I was about to pass out. Why do I have to hear something like that when I'm in so much pain? It's not like I'm lying. I really am suffering. I can't take this anymore. I want to run away from this place right now. It was when I felt like I had reached my limit. David happened to come into the office saw what was happening, and quickly rushed to help me. There's no way someone who's sweating and struggling this much is faking it. Stop talking nonsense and go get some help. David's shouting echoed through the floor, and soon other employees began to gather. Realizing the situation had gotten serious, Jennifer tried to escape, but David quickly caught her and dragged her to the conference room. Other employees who had also been harassed by Jennifer reported her behavior to David, and word of this quickly reached my dad. As a result, Jennifer was demoted after the incident. I finally regained some peace, and with the support of my coworkers, I continued working. This situation also led to me getting closer to David 
and naturally, we developed a romantic relationship. I thought things would continue to be happy, but reality wasn't that kind. I didn't realize that the man I initially thought was a great guy was actually a terrible person. Without even knowing it, I became the kind of woman who was just convenient for him. David, with his experience and smooth talking ways, manipulated me, and before I knew it, I was dependent on him, doing whatever he wanted. Without realizing what was happening, I ended up marrying him and found myself trapped in a hellish marriage. When I got home from work, he treated me like a servant, and if I tried to resist even a little, he would overpower me with force. He kept me from leaving by balancing cruelty with occasional kindness, and I became unable to escape from his control. After three and a half years of living like that, I found out I was pregnant. I've always loved children, so I was filled with joy when I found out I was pregnant. However, David didn't seem nearly as thrilled. His face twisted in displeasure. Are you sure it's not some mistake and you're really pregnant? That was the first thing he said when I told him as soon as I got home. Honestly, I think it's a bit early. We don't have much in savings, and we're not exactly living comfortably, right? If we had a kid now, wouldn't it be unfair to bring them into a life where they'd struggle? I was so shocked, I couldn't even respond. We had sexual intercourse as a married couple. If you weren't serious about it, that's just incredibly irresponsible. I was frustrated by his unbelievable response, but even so, I was overjoyed by my pregnancy and deeply wanted to have my baby. If you're only worried about the money, I've been saving up, so we'll be fine. It's not a huge amount, but it's enough to support an additional child. The moment he heard that, David's tone brightened. Really? You've saved that much? Man, why didn't you tell me that from the start? If I knew you had savings, I wouldn't have made such a big deal about it. His words left me feeling a bit uneasy. But it was just a gut feeling. I had no proof or concrete reason to doubt him. At that moment, I couldn't bring myself to ask him about my doubts. It was because I was too afraid of making him angry and feared what he might do to me. In the end, once he found out we had enough money, David didn't oppose me having the baby. Still, he didn't seem particularly excited. Even when I gave him updates about the baby, he seemed distracted and uninterested. As a result, I ended up going to doctor's appointments alone, listening to everything the doctor had to say by myself and was left to handle all the preparations for the birth on my own. After that, David's behavior became increasingly suspicious. He had never been that interested in me before, but now he was constantly asking about my schedule and checking my phone. It felt like he was monitoring my every move, and my distrust of him only grew. Whenever I tried to question him about it, he would raise his voice in anger. You're only asking because you've got something to hide, right? He would shut down my opinions like that, and I became too scared to express how I felt. Still, I couldn't bring myself to leave him. At the time, I think I was still holding on to the gratitude I felt toward him for helping me back then. That sense of indebtedness was huge for me. Besides, David could be kind and thoughtful when he wanted to be. The balance between his kindness and cruelty wasn't enough to push me to leave just yet. I was completely caught in his trap. My parents were concerned about my condition. They couldn't stand to watch me anymore and suggested I return home to give birth. You were about to have a child. You'd feel more at ease with support around you, wouldn't you? You tend to carry everything on your own shoulders and don't complain. You should come stay with us for a while after your baby is born. I can handle the housework, 
And you don't know many people where you are anyway, do you? They were right. I didn't have many friends and no one I could easily turn to for advice on raising a child. I didn't want to push myself too hard and risk it affecting the baby. Grateful for their offer, I agreed to return home for the birth. On the day I was supposed to leave for my parents' house, David dropped me off and immediately tried to leave. I still have work to do, so I'll be on my way now. David ignored my mom's offer to stay for a coffee and hurried off as if he were escaping from my dad. Watching him leave, my dad frowned in suspicion. He's still the same, isn't he? Apparently, my dad was quite the wild one when he was younger and had become somewhat of a legend in high school. Since David went to the same high school, he knew all about it. After graduating, my dad worked his way up and now runs multiple construction companies. He's highly respected by his employees. And at the same time, the respect everyone has for my mom is equally remarkable. My mom was also famous in her youth, known as a bit of a rebel, and was just as popular as my dad. At first, I thought it was because she was my dad's wife, but I eventually realized that the truly frightening one was my mom, not my dad, and I learned this when I was a child. One day, I overheard some employees talking about my mom, and she caught them in the act, giving them a harsh scolding. The scene was so terrifying that from that day on, everyone feared her even more than my dad. After returning home from my birth, I was treated like royalty. The employees were all kind and helpful, jumping in to assist me with everything. If I so much as tried to carry something heavy, everyone would shout at me in concern, and for the first time in a long while, I felt the warmth of people's kindness. Thanks to their support, I safely gave birth to my first child, a baby girl. My parents and all employees were overjoyed. But I couldn't shake my feeling of the knees. Are you still thinking about David? Yeah. David hadn't even shown up at the hospital on the day of the birth. Apparently, there had been an error with an order and he said he'd be late and wouldn't make it in time for visiting hours. So, he canceled his plans to be there for the birth, saying he'd visit another day. The situation was so unreasonable that, for the first time, I raised my voice. Work can be handled by someone else, but the birth is today. Just today. I'm scared and nervous about this first time, and you're leaving me alone? That's just cruel. Can't you make time even a little? Please come see me. Normally, I would have just accepted it as part of his work. But this was the birth of our child. I felt this was far more important than any job, and I couldn't hold back my angry words. But the moment David heard my words, he responded with something I could hardly believe. Can you not lay that stress on me? I'm already fed up with work piling up. I'll visit after the baby's born, so it's no big deal, right? If you're going to keep giving me a hard time about this, forget it. I won't bother showing up at all. He said his piece, and without giving me a chance to reply, he hung up. When I tried calling him back, his phone was off, and I couldn't reach him. In the end, I faced the birth alone. Our baby was born safely. After my daughter was born and I had calmed down, I realized that things couldn't go on like this. So, I decided to text David and tell him about the birth. I thought this might be an opportunity to finally talk to him. Congrats. But all I got in return was that short, cold response. There was no further contact from him and I kept reaching out to him again and again, with no reply. I can't go on like this. I need to confront him. I tried to muster the courage to contact him again, and that's when it happened. Rachel, we need to talk. 
Suddenly, my dad, who had just finished work, showed up with two of his employees and called me over. Their serious expressions immediately made me sense that something was wrong. I swallowed nervously, sat down across from them, and asked what was going on. Please stay calm while you listen. David might be cheating on you. What? I was speechless at the sudden revelation. As I sat there in shock, unable to process what had just been said, one of the employees placed several photos on the table. The picture showed David entering a hotel, arm in arm with a woman I didn't recognize. One of my colleagues took these. He contacted me yesterday and explained the situation. And then... As I listened to the rest of the story, I couldn't hold back my emotions and burst into tears, crying uncontrollably. With everything that had happened up to this point, I couldn't hold back my emotions any longer and started crying out loud like a child. Hearing the commotion, my mom rushed over and wrapped me in her arms. Rachel, you don't have to endure this anymore. That's right. You don't need to suffer any longer. He's gone too far. He crossed a line that should never be crossed. Rachel, what's the most important thing to you? As soon as I heard those words, my tears stopped, and I looked over at my daughter sleeping nearby. You need to protect her now. Do you really need him to be a part of your family? That's right. How can someone act like this when they have a child? How could I ever trust him to help raise her? I don't need him. I don't even want him near her. With my mind made up, I vowed to get back at David. I decided to return home with my parents, determined to take control of my life. I finally managed to set things up to return home, but I purposely didn't tell David the exact day I'd be back. I thought that if I let him know, I wouldn't be able to catch him in the act. When I arrived home with my parents, David's car was parked in the garage, even though he was supposed to be at work. As expected, I exchanged glances with my parents, and we prepared to confront him. I handed my baby daughter over to my mom and went inside the house with my dad first. The house was eerily quiet, with no sign of anyone being around. Curious, my dad and I entered the bedroom, and what we saw was unbelievable. There it is. Sure enough, there was David peacefully sleeping next to another woman, completely unaware of what was happening. Sighing at the predictability of it all, I took out my phone and snapped some photos as evidence. The sound of the camera shutter must have woken him up because David looked at us with bleary eyes. Rachel and Bill too. What are you doing here? Still half asleep, David struggled to comprehend what was going on. But the moment he realized it was reality, he jumped out of bed, frantically trying to cover the other woman with the blanket. There's no point in hiding her. I've got all the evidence I need, so just give it up. What's all this noise? What's going on? The woman, still half asleep, rubbed her eyes, and finally realized what was happening. Her name was Sarah. She was David's mistress, and this was my first time meeting her. However, she had a connection with my dad, which is how he knew who she really was. The moment Sarah saw my dad and me, she froze, mouth agape in shock. To think you'd have the nerve to cheat in broad daylight and invite your mistress into our home? Don't you have any sense of danger at all? Even though we knew her identity, I purposely called her a mistress to keep her unaware of what we knew. When David heard the word mistress, his shoulders flinched in surprise. How do you know about that? And why didn't you tell me? You never told me when you'd be coming back. If I had told you, I wouldn't have been able to catch you red-handed. Knowing you, you would have deleted all the evidence from your phone. So, 
How has it been? Have you enjoyed your time with your mistress these past few months while I've been away? I deliberately chose words to provoke him, watching as he panicked. David, clearly irritated by my words, glared at me with a furious expression. But instead of backing down, I stood firm, staring him down with contempt. You knew I was cheating? Of course. How many people in our company do you think know you? It would be more surprising if it hadn't been found out. At that moment, David, who had been panicking, suddenly smiled and with a smug attitude, said something shocking. Well, if you know, then that's that. It's over between us. You can have the kid, but I want a divorce, and I want you out. I found someone better, and honestly, I don't want to deal with a kid. As for you, I stopped loving you a long time ago. Hearing this sudden declaration of divorce, Anger surged inside me. How dare he act so smug instead of apologizing? Why should I have to put up with this arrogance? Just as I was about to retort, my dad cut in with a bombshell of his own, directing it at David. What? Divorce isn't an option. After all, you still owe me a debt. Do you really think I'm going to let you go without paying me back first? The moment those words left my dad's mouth, David's face turned pale. At the same time, Sarah blinked in confusion and turned to David. Wait, Dad? What is he talking about? It seemed Sarah knew nothing about it. She glared at David, trying to figure out the truth, while David, clearly unsettled, looked away, avoiding her gaze. Well, that's... David broke into a cold sweat as the secret he didn't want exposed came to light. Having already been told the full story by my dad, I watched their exchange in silence. You thought you could get away with this nonsense without paying me back? Did you really think I'd stay quiet after everything I've done for Rachel's happiness? Well, too bad for you. I've already told Rachel everything so there's nothing left to hide. My dad's words hit the mark, and David's face was a mix of shock and disbelief. David had taken advantage of my parents' kindness toward me, thinking he could get away with his behavior. But now that I had resolved to take action against him, my dad no longer needed to hold back. In front of an unsuspecting Sarah, David was left humiliated. From the looks of it, she doesn't know your situation, does she? Well, let me tell you something, miss. Sure, he's treated you well and made you feel special, but none of it was with his own money. It was all borrowed, money he got through debt. What? Sarah's face immediately showed her shock at this sudden revelation. However, she still looked at David, as if unsure whether to fully believe it. Seeing this, my dad, determined to convince her, made a phone call. As if on cue, my mom entered the room shortly after. I know it's hard to believe, but let me share something even more unbelievable with you. With a sly grin, my dad handed Sarah a document my mom had brought with her. David instantly knew what it was. Stop. Don't show her that. Panicking, David tried to snatch the paper from my dad, but he was no match for my dad's sturdy build. Undeterred, my dad placed the document in front of Sarah and revealed the shocking truth. This guy's a loser who racked up a huge amount of debt through gambling. Gambling? Sarah looked at the document in disbelief. It was an IOU. This is proof that we lent him money. Our lawyer drew up this agreement. The IOU clearly stated that David owed my dad $20,000 with David's signature at the bottom. It also included a clause stating that if he defaulted, 
he would face severe penalties, solidifying my dad's claim. My dad then made it clear that the agreement wasn't forced by showing footage from a security camera, proving everything he said was true. He showed Sarah the video he had transferred to his phone, making sure she saw the evidence for herself. See? Now you can't say the debt is fake. While Rachel was back home, this guy was gambling and begged me to bail him out. What? You've been lying to me this whole time. You were happy with all the gifts I gave you. I got the money, didn't I? Money is money. Stop acting like it's such a big deal. David had been splurging on Sarah with luxury goods and paying for all their dates, to the point where he had used up most of his living expenses. Sarah, unaware of all this, had assumed David was wealthy and had been easily deceived into becoming his mistress. It was like a con game between two tricksters. I couldn't help but sigh at how ridiculous the whole situation was. You haven't even paid back that money? And now you're talking about divorce and cheating? You've got to be kidding me. My dad, who rarely raised his voice, shouted furiously causing David to cower and let out a pathetic whimper. David, usually so arrogant, was now like a scared cat in front of my dad. The fear in his eyes was clear as he frantically looked around for a way to escape. That's when it seemed he came up with the idea to shift the blame onto someone else. David pointed at me and, shockingly, began to make me out to be the villain. This is all your fault for getting pregnant. If it wasn't for the kid, I wouldn't have had to do any of this. What? I frowned, unable to comprehend the absurdity of his words, as David, seemingly confused, continued to lash out at me with even more unreasonable accusations. If you hadn't had the baby, I'd still have my freedom. I only married you so you'd take care of the housework. I never even wanted a kid. David's cruel words continued to flow, completely unfazed, even in front of our child. My mom, not wanting my daughter to hear such awful things, gently covered her ears while I glared at David in disbelief. I'd have to prioritize the kid, and even after work, I wouldn't have any free time. I can't stand that kind of life. So, I figured I'd blow off some steam before it all happened. And then... It turns out, David had run out of money for dates, so he turned to gambling, pouring money into it. As a result, he racked up a debt of $20,000 in a single day and, panicking, begged my dad to bail him out. But that wasn't the only shocking revelation. So, what did you do to repay that debt? Under the pressure of my dad's demand, David hesitated, avoiding eye contact. As I glared at him, he finally gave in and muttered something under his breath. I used the savings. Speak up. David clearly embarrassed to say it in front of Sarah and me, mumbled his words. But my dad wasn't going to let him off the hook. He raised his voice, causing David to shout in desperation. I used Rachel's savings. Hearing this, Sarah's mouth fell open in disbelief as she stared at David. He didn't attend Rachel's childbirth because he was trying to win back the money he lost from her savings. On the day Rachel was giving birth, he was at the casino. The excuse about work was a complete lie. My dad looked at David, who was now hanging his head in defeat, and with a look of utter disappointment, continued speaking. My mom chimed in, adding to the story. One of our employees just happened to be off that day and saw him at the casino. They said they were shocked to see someone they knew there, making a scene, and admitted they felt embarrassed just being in the same place. 
The truth is, we were able to notice David's strange behavior thanks to a tip-off from one of our employees. He had shared this story with my mom, which led to the discovery of David's debt and lies, prompting my dad to summon him to the office. At that time, my dad had no idea that David was also cheating. Believing in David's promise to repay the debt, he reluctantly agreed to help him. However, determined to hold David accountable, my dad made sure to impose a strict penalty if David failed to keep his word. He probably thought everything would be fine as long as his cheating didn't get exposed. This is exactly what we mean when we say he was careless. David, unaware that the employee worked for us, had openly confessed his situation. Regretting his loose lips, David clicked his tongue in frustration, avoiding everyone's gaze. Do you remember what you said when I bailed you out of debt? Well, I... You said you'd pay the money back and begged me not to tell Rachel. You promised that you'd never make her cry again. You said that if you did, I could do whatever I wanted with you. You begged for my forgiveness, didn't you? Isn't that right? My dad hates nothing more than seeing his family hurt. He's a man with an enormous amount of love for his family, and I'm sure he wanted to tell me everything right away. But I had just given birth, and my daughter was still so young. He didn't want to burden me with this in my exhausted state. So, after thinking it over, he consulted with my mom. They both agreed to keep it a secret for the time being, as long as David paid off his debt and treated me well. They decided to give him one chance. I'm sorry, Rachel. We even made him sign an agreement with our lawyer but I guess we were too soft on him. We should have pushed harder back then. My mom, always so considerate, apologized, concerned for me as I dealt with the exhaustion of taking care of my newborn. The kindness and warmth of her words almost brought me to tears. I understand your feelings more than you know. I shook my head at my mom, who was apologizing, and responded with my words. You two don't need to apologize for anything. The ones at fault here are David and his mistress. That's right. He really has done quite a number on us, hasn't he? While my dad's anger was obvious, my mom wore a chilling smile. Seeing her, David trembled in fear and somehow managed to slip from my dad's grip, making a dash for the door. But I wasn't about to let him go. I blocked his path, and my dad quickly stood beside me, preventing his escape. My mom handed me my daughter, then backed David against the wall, leaving him with no way out. You haven't paid back your debt. You cheated. And now you want a divorce? Don't you dare say such ridiculous things. David, completely cornered, turned pale as a sheep. She pressed the agreement right into David's face as he looked utterly pathetic. You said, if you broke this promise, I could do whatever I wanted with you. Well then, let's go ahead and make that happen. Whatever you want. Rachel, you get to decide. My mom, who had been quiet until now, turned to me with a wide smile. I nodded and stepped closer to David, looking him directly in the eye. From now on, I'm going to treat you like a rag. Don't think you'll be heading home after work. I'll make sure you're buried in work until you're completely worn out, and don't expect to have any rights either. You didn't just betray me. You betrayed my parents too. That's too much. Yes, I may have done something horrible, but taking away my basic rights. You think you deserve basic rights after stealing from me and betraying everyone? You're delusional. I closed in on David as he spouted his pathetic excuses, glaring into his eyes. When I leaned in and looked directly into his face, he let out a small, frightened yelp, overwhelmed by fear. 
A simple divorce is far too easy. You'll be working for us for the rest of your life until we're satisfied. You'll be lucky if you even come out of this as a rag. As I stepped away from him with a sinister smile, David finally seemed to grasp what was about to happen. Filled with despair, he hung his head and collapsed onto the floor. Seeing this, Sarah turned pale with fear, frantically looking around for an escape. Noticing her panic, my mom approached her, and Sarah let out a small scream, her body stiffening. You knew exactly who you were getting involved with, didn't you? What? No, I didn't. Caught off guard, Sarah widened her eyes in shock. With a smile, my mom wrapped her arm around Sarah's shoulders. Don't think you can run. We've already looked into who you are and how you met David. Hearing this, Sarah gasped in disbelief. As it turns out, she's the daughter of the CEO of one of my dad's business partners, and more importantly, she's married. My dad, who knew her husband, immediately informed both the CEO and her husband about this situation. Her husband was furious when he learned the details, and the CEO apologized profusely. They both gave my dad permission to handle her as he saw fit, just like with David. We've already received permission from your husband and your dad's company. You'll be living at our company and working hard, with no pay. Your husband said we should consider it part of your compensation. My mom's smile, though warm, carried the weight of a demon. Realizing the hell that awaited her, Sarah began to cry, pleading with me for forgiveness. Seeing this, David ran over to me as well, apologizing and begging for mercy. Both of you, calm down. Please stop apologizing. I spoke to them gently, encouraging them to look at me. Maybe they thought they'd be forgiven from the tone of my voice because a faint glimmer of hope appeared on their faces. But that was never going to happen. With a bright smile, I delivered the words that would push them into despair. Stop apologizing. It's making me sick. Do you really think an apology will fix anything now? It won't undo the past, and it sure won't heal the scars you've left on me. No way. Don't think you're going to escape this. Our company employees are eagerly waiting for you both. By the way, we'll be handling all your living expenses and everything else from now on. Don't worry, I'll make sure you get your pay stubs. With a sarcastic smile, I laid out their fate. Defeated, they quietly followed us. Later, when we went to explain the situation to David's parents, they were furious with him calling him pathetic. They apologized to me and gave us permission to handle the situation however we saw fit. Since David's dad was a police officer and his mom a lawyer, they promised to fully support us. They even said that if David or Sarah came crying to them, David's parents would bring them right back to us. Thanks to their support, both David and Sarah gave up any resistance and accepted their fate. In the end, I sued them both for compensation. For David, in addition to his infidelity, he had stolen from me. Considering that, I demanded more than double the amount of money he had taken. When he saw the amount, he was devastated, claiming there was no way he could pay it back. But there was no way I'd let him off that easily. If you work yourself to the bone from morning till night, it's not an impossible amount to repay. You're still in your 30s. By the time you're done with your retirement, you'll have paid it off. Of course, you won't have any time for fun. My dad delivered these chilling words with a hearty laugh. Hearing those words, David protested, claiming he'd rather go to prison. But his resistance was futile, and he was soon thrown into a harsh work environment. 
The department David was placed in required the most intense physical labor in our company, and it was filled with tough men, many of whom were former rugby and football players. Even though the workload was already demanding, David was forced to work even harder to repay his debt and compensation. Every day, he struggled and groaned under the pressure. Meanwhile, as for Sarah, my dad placed her in a new company he had established that handled the collection of waste oil. There, she worked on dirty tasks every day. At first, just like David, she resisted the jobs, which angered my mom. In response, my mom placed her in a department with similar heavy labor to what David was doing. As expected, the workload was too intense for her, and she soon broke down, crying to my mom, begging to be moved because she couldn't keep up. Reluctantly, my mom assigned her to the company she now works for. Many of the employees there are strict, and with Sarah being so sheltered and naive, she was constantly struggling to keep up. For months, she came home in tears every day. But eventually, it seemed she resigned herself to her situation. Now, she works desperately, though she's grown thin and pale, trying to pay back the compensation she owes. Both David and Sarah were now trapped in a living hell, suffering daily. While they endured their misery, I was enjoying a peaceful life. Thanks to the compensation payments from them, I didn't need to work until my daughter started school and I could spend plenty of time with her. However, when my daughter entered middle school and I found myself with more free time, I decided to return to work. Worried about me, my parents arranged for me to work under them and now I'm back at the family business. My daughter once asked me about David and I told her everything honestly. I was afraid that she might want to go to him after hearing the truth, but that fear turned out to be unfounded. Why would I ever want to go to him after hearing all that? I'm just glad you're free from him, Mom. As long as I have you, I don't need him. Her matter-of-fact response left me surprised. She has absolutely no interest in David and doesn't even see him as her dad. Now, my dad has become a dad figure to my daughter. The relationship between my parents and my daughter is incredibly strong. My daughter has become very attached to her grandparents, practically a grandpa and grandma's girl. I'm just happy to see both you and her smiling. I'm sorry for all the worry I caused. I promise you won't have to worry about me anymore. I realized that I didn't need a man to survive. With so many strong, reliable people around me, I knew I could make it on my own. And so, with the support of those around me, I continued to live my life to the fullest.